Parents, what secrets do you know about your teenager that they don't know you know? Story 1. I've noticed my son, who's 14, goes into the bathroom every night after his sister goes to bed. I'm pretty sure it's his nightly math. I'm not sure why he can't do it in his bedroom, but whatever. It's not like I'm going to ask him about it. But it's like clockwork. I tuck my daughter into bed, retire to my own bedroom, and I hear him go into the bathroom every night. Story 2. When we moved into this house, I did up an old workshop that was away from the house so my son and his mates could use it. It's been carpeted and curtained for insulation and soundproofing and has good electrics, so the light, heating, and fridge has been taken care of, fully networked for his internet and Xbox, and later we improved the ventilation due to the copious amounts of weed they all smoke. It also has its own entrance, so people can come and go and pizza can be delivered without it disturbing me. When he was a teenager, it was packed with his friends every night. At weekends, they'd even sleep in there, but while he thought he was getting a great deal from us, we at least knew where he was every night and never had to worry about him hanging out on street corners or committing petty crimes because he had nowhere to go and giving himself, and more importantly my wife, that kind of peace of mind was priceless. Story 3 Not a parent, but after getting caught asking Jeeves once for naked pictures of Britney Spears, yeah, it was a long time ago. I thought that I learned how to get my porn the proper way. I would just go print the pictures and clear the history. After accumulating tons of printed pictures that got dirtier as I got older, I come home one day to find that my lovely mother has cleaned my room. In a panic, I just awkwardly thank my mom and go running upstairs. Before I can though, she just says, Oh, and I put your things in the bottom drawer of your far nightstand. And sure enough, my wank bank was neatly organized in a box on my nightstand. It was a difficult time when we only had family computers. Wanking with a family computer, I fear this sacred dance of fast cover-ups and clever history erasing will be lost art for future generations of adolescents. Story 4 I'm divorced now, but I had a teenage stepson during the MySpace boom. I asked him one day if he had a MySpace page and he said, MySpace? What's that? I knew he was full of crap. One day, he left his email open on the computer, and there were about 100 emails saying someone had posted on his MySpace page. One email was where he sent his girlfriend his login info for his page. Great move, more on that later. He tried to act like a bad ass on there and was talking about drinking and fighting and getting laid. He was 14 and a bit of a geek, and I'm pretty sure none of this was happening as he spent most weekends at home. I checked the page periodically to see what he was up to. One day, I go on there and his page is pink with hearts and p**** all over it. Huge text saying, I am gay and I love guys, and a huge paragraph confessing his love for this other boy. At this point, I call him in and ask him what the hell is going on. He damn near craps himself when he sees the page on the screen. Long story short, he tried to grab some b**** on his girlfriend and she told him no. He tries again and she says no and he gets pissed off. So she took control of his MySpace page and turned him gay, then changed the password. Well played, 8th grade girl. Well played indeed. And why people give their significant others passwords is absolutely beyond me. Story 5. Not a parent, but I am 18 and my boyfriend is 18 and we regularly have sex in his room while his dad is home. His dad has walked in on us a couple of times, but we always make up a really lame excuse. My boyfriend is always so surprised that he believes us. I don't have the heart to tell my boyfriend that there is no way in hell that his dad doesn't know he's taking his skin boat to Tuna Town every time I'm there. Story 6. Here's what your parents know. That sitting under the blanket with a boyfriend or girlfriend on movie night is almost always an attempt at concealing groping and touching. Quote unquote hanging out in the garage, basement, or old playhouse actually means we are going to drink, do dr make out, dry hump, or experiment sexually. You have a secret stash of slut clothes. Your toilet bowl tank is actually a terrible hiding place, and so is the top of the door frame inside your closet. More parents know about key logging than you think. Clear their history as much as you can, it still won't make a difference. When you come home at night after partying, we can smell the cigarettes, the pot, the perfume, and booze on your breath. You can eat an entire tin of Altoids and bathe in Febreze, you still stink of your crime. However, if you do follow a routine of being respectful, keeping your grades up while continuing to aspire to be a good person and continue your efforts at concealing your shenanigans and gracefully accept the occasional bust, mom and dad will do their best to turn a blind eye. Adults are nothing more than grown-up teenagers anyway. We know the game very well because, well, we played it too. 
Story 7. My daughter can't poop without someone being by the bathroom. She's five. She always says, watch me go poop. And when we ignore her, it just gets more like, someone watch me go poop. What are we talking about? Uh, well, this might raise some problems in the future for her. Story 8. I work with and coach adolescent and teen kids. They're often ridiculously easy to read. Even the sneaky ones are usually pretty bad at keeping secrets. In my late 20s, I realized that I was probably pretty similar when I was a kid and that all the stuff I thought I had gotten away with then, parents, camp counselors, teachers, etc., was probably just the adults showing discretion. I see what you did there, mom and dad. Well played. Well played. Reply. I'm not a parent, but when I was in the army, I used to see this all the time with 18-year-olds we used to get from basic training. Not only is it ridiculously easy to spot when they were trying to get away with things, but for whatever reason, a fair number of them would insist up and down that they weren't even doing what they were doing when they had been caught red-handed. It really made me appreciate my mom and a few of my teachers who looked out for me when I was a kid. Story 9. Advice to parents, be careful about what you think you know. My parents often like to accuse me of smoking weed and acted very high and mighty about how they knew I was doing it and should just admit it. I don't smoke weed. I react terribly to it. I get nauseated. It's not fun for me. So just take a step back once in a while as much as you may think you know something unless you have actual proof. It doesn't mean squat. Story 10. Well, let's see. One day at 15, he comes home very late from school. He has a grin and avoids eye contact. He immediately takes a shower, something he never did after school. That was the day he lost his virginity. But I checked the condoms I kept stored in a drawer in the living room, and yep, some were missing. Story 11. A lot more than they think. The only secret my kids had that they thought I didn't know was that they were experimenting with pot. The rest of their quote-unquote secrets have been outed by my kids themselves. I have a rare and exceptional relationship with both my kids. For example, I knew when my daughter was going to have sex for the first time, she told me about it because she wanted to be safe. I knew when she was experimenting with girls, she and the girls talked to me about it and asked me if it made them gay. I said no. I found out that when my son lost his virginity the night it happened, he told me and asked me for money to buy more condoms. My kids never had to drink behind my back. They did so at home and with supervision, which is legal in my state, by the way. Now they don't care for drinking and are always the sober ones at parties, except for when they decide to drink and then they spend the night. I don't have super kids and I'm not self-righteous, I'm a perfect parent, nah. I got lucky, somehow struck gold with honesty and openness. Part of how I got lucky was knowing everything when they were younger and then figuring out a few key things in their early teens to convince them that I always find out anyway. The other part was in fostering a relationship of respect and honesty and walking the walk when I told them I would never judge them for the things they tell me, although I always reserve the right to advise and counsel them. The only time I came down on them was when I found out they were experimenting with pot. They didn't tell me about it and I had to find out through my spies. I'm a former cop, so they thought I'd never understand. Story 12 I'm a parent, and of course, when I was a teenager, I did all of the typical stuff, underage drinking, smoking weed, spending night at a friend's house, etc. Anyway, my daughter always thought that she was 007 when it came time for her to do all of that stuff. The best story on her was when her mom grounded her for smoking weed. She thought we had telepathy to figure that out, told her that I was a teenager once too, and she snuck out of the house to hang out with friends. The problem was that she butt-dialed home after she left the house, so we were able to hear everything that she was doing until she realized 90 minutes later that she was on an open line to her mother at 2 a.m. My wife wasn't amused, but I thought the whole episode was funny as hell. Story 13. When my kids were still too young to drive, I would drive them and their friends' places. If I was quiet and just drove them, they seemed to forget I was there and would discuss stuff. I learned a lot about what was going on during those drives. I never snooped in their rooms because they weren't big troublemakers. I figured they smoked weed some and probably had sex as well. And that just seems like normal teen stuff, so I didn't sweat it. I did, however, find the empty package of the morning after pill in the bathroom trash and gave each of them another much louder lecture on safe sex. It is really exhausting dealing with teens and their friends. You just want them to not be stupid and fuck up their lives and they think you're being a pain and don't know anything. Story 14. Mine is the, uh, the reverse. So my mother was always like computer literate, but was terrible at hiding her tracks. She was able to take the photos, upload them, email them, and delete them from the camera, but never seemed to check the recycling bin. 
So one day I decided to clear out some stuff I had downloaded for sexy alone time and went all the way through with covering my tracks only to find about six photos I never wanted to see and the piercing I never wanted to know about. Story 15. I'm not a parent yet, but I'd like to share an awkward story from my own teenage years. I was raised by my super strict, hardcore Christian Baptist grandparents. I was a really horny virgin female. Since I wasn't ready to give it up yet, I went to Spencer's and bought myself a nice dildo and vibrator. We had such great times together and I'd hide it under a certain stack of notebooks and papers in my drawer. One day, I come home from school and my grandma says, Honey, your room was looking messy so I cleaned it for you. I thought, okay, she picked up and probably vacuumed, no biggie. When I go in there, I immediately checked my secret hiding place, the dildo was gone. She had cleaned and organized my room, which was completely unnecessary. I never saw the dildo again and she never brought it up. So without a dildo, I lost my virginity to my boyfriend. Way to go, grandma. Story 16. When I was younger, I used to take long dumps in the bathroom and pass the time by playing around and making little scenarios up using my hands, two fingers and legs as characters. I would be in the bathroom for about an hour or so, legs going numb because I would get engrossed in the story. Pretty sure my parents thought I was discovering math, but I was just playing with myself in a totally different way. Story 17. My friend went for vacation for two weeks and when he came back, his grandmother cleaned his room. He was a little bit shocked to find out that not only did his grandmother find his porno magazines, but she also organized his porno magazines chronologically. That is the coolest grandma ever in my opinion. Story 18. My daughter is now aware that I know, but for a while, she tried to hide that she was gay. I had an inkling that she leaned in that direction as she was never really interested in boys or dating, but that could just have been shyness as well. There had been a few times when she seemed very intent on another girl and would talk about how pretty she was. I tried to drop hints that I knew and that I didn't care. I even had a talk with her about dating and told her that I didn't care about gender, only that she was with a person that she enjoyed being with. Story 19. For me, it's the other way around. Kind of funny, actually. So, I'm an Indian living in Canada, and my parents have always raised us, not allowing us to date, etc. I didn't really ever care because I would do it behind their back anyway, and I know they'll be okay with choosing my life partner. They're just serious about education and crap. However, I went to India a few years back, and I found out through my grandma that my parents actually had a love marriage. Yeah, this is a thing, and it was kind of a big deal back then in India but it's a pretty cute story. My parents' families know each other from the same really distant relation, and so the kids would see each other at weddings and stuff. They started liking each other and wrote letters to each other across the country. Eventually, my mom talked to her mom about it and her parents set up the thing with my dad's parents. My sister and I haven't told them we know. I want to surprise them on some crazy occasion someday and just be like, so, I know, now tell me the whole story. Story 20. I'm not a parent, but one Saturday when I was in high school, I snuck out the basement window, cleaned the getaway, had fun with my friends, and smoothly re-entry and back into bed. The next morning, my mom, dad, and I were finishing breakfast. I felt like a f panther. I just duped my dad. He went to West Point and was in the army for quite some time, so he's very alert. My mom goes upstairs, and as I wash the dishes, my dad walks over to me and says suspiciously, Dad, hey, can you load the dishwasher? Me, sure. So dad starts to walk upstairs, stops, turns, continues to walk, stops, and turns again. Dad, oh, and when you're done, can you clean up the mud you left behind on the wall from when you snuck out the basement window last night? Thanks. Smiles and walks upstairs. Reply, my mom recently told me that when she was in high school, she would sneak out back into her house through the basement window too after being out late with friends and whatnot. After doing this for a few months, she came home one night to find a note on the window from my grandfather saying, Mary, just use your key and go through the kitchen door. She figured he would be sitting there waiting for her, but he wasn't. He just didn't want cops to see her and think she was breaking in. He wasn't going to deal with that crap at 2 in the morning. Story 21. My parents think they know something about me, but in reality, it's just an innocent thing. In high school, I was on the water, polo, swim, and track teams. Tons and tons of cardio. I would come home absolutely exhausted, go upstairs, and hop in the shower. Now, our shower is one of those nice shower head bathtub combos. I would turn the water to scalding hot, then sit down in the tub because of how tired my legs were. I would sit there until the water started turning cold, about 30 minutes or so. 
My parents started to make these weird comments, and it wasn't until I moved out of the house that I realized they thought I was spending all that time mad and they just wanted me to do it in my room so I wasn't wasting hot water. And of course, I would respond with, I just like sitting in the tub with the hot water, leave me alone. Which I'm sure just sounded ridiculous and made it seem more obvious that I was whacking the willy. God damn it, mom, I was just taking a shower. Story 22. The other day I was sitting and watching TV when my cousin comes in. She's not from the city, so she went out with a few friends and got back around 11.30. She did the, I'm just gonna stand here and watch what's on TV for a second and try to act casual, then retreat into the bedroom and think I got away with everything. That I thought I had perfected my high school years. I'm 18, but I feel like a parent. Story 23. When I was a young teen, my folks would let me hang out with friends till around 11.30ish or so. I didn't want to go home yet, so I'd call the house before we had caller ID and wait for my mom or dad to answer. Once they did, I'd say, it's okay, mom, dad, the phone's for me, and carry about about my night. Needless to say, they later bought phones with caller ID, got caught, game over. Story 24. During this past Christmas dinner, during the actual dinner part, my aunt and uncle were complaining that my cousin spent all of his time playing video games. He's 13. Oh, he doesn't think we know what he's doing, but whenever we walk in his room and see him on the computer, there's a blank desktop, said my aunt. And he doesn't think we know how to check the internet history. All of my older relatives were laughing hysterically while I could see my cousin turn red next to me. Now, I'm not sure if my older relatives knew that he was watching porn, but I know for sure his parents do. So awkward. Story 25. So, in high school, I partied like it was my last chance to... I went out every weekend to the college nearby, got wasted, slept with random men, and drove around with quote-unquote sober friends, and was involved in every sort of activity I probably shouldn't have been in. I never worked very hard to hide this from my parents either. Oh, I'm only going to a party, but I'm not going to drink, or it's dressed like a girl's only sleepover. I'm certain my parents knew exactly what was up, but they never called me out on it. I've always been rather confused about that. I guess I did keep my grades pretty well high and still get all my other shit done too. Story 26. I was at my friend's house watching football a couple of weekends ago and there was a knock on the door. It was a teenage couple who come to see my friend's daughters who were hanging out with some of other friends in a back room. So they walk back there. Not even five minutes later, the couple walk back out and left. It was obvious as hell to us that a drug transaction of some type had just gone down back there. We all made jokes that my friends better check their stash or maybe we should ask them to share. Then we got back to drinking beer and watching football. Story 27. So I got a free subscription to Playboy from one of the thousands of internet offers. When one showed up, I acted extremely innocent as to how they started arriving. I made up a name to put on the magazine's mailing address label. I opened them and left them in a pile up high where no one can reach in my home office. I explained to my son, 13, that the magazine was reprehensible and only offered airbrushed and unrealistic expectations of women. It was only okay for fantasy, but no one should ever expect their girlfriends and wives to be this quote-unquote perfect. I left the stack out of regular view, but obvious enough that they could be found by those extremely desperate. I have only flipped through each magazine once when they first arrived, but somehow over the past year, they have become extremely well-worn and seem to have been flipped through a lot. If nothing else, the security blocks on the internet are still in place and he isn't exposed to some of that crazy stuff out there that desensitizes young men to actual contact with a woman. After the first conversation about how women do not actually look this way and no one should expect that, I have never brought them up again and he seems to think they are magazines I have read and he's the smoothest criminal ever. Story 28 I had a drumstick, I'm a drummer, and Vaseline for my dry feet. And I had put the stuff under my bed just because I was lazy. One day, my mom pulls me aside and says, please just use your fingers. I didn't realize what she meant until a day or two later. Story 29, when I was 15 and discovered the pure pleasure of detachable shower heads, I thought my parents had no idea. My mom takes me aside one day and says, don't think we don't know what you're doing in there. You spent way too long in there and I was young once, you know. Needless to say, I was completely mortified. Story 30. When my son started getting wet dreams, he made a loincloth out of toilet paper and duct tape to wear at night. It looked like a big silver diaper. Reply, your son is the Thomas Edison of jizzing in his sleep. Well done. Well done.